Okay. Sound speeding. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Le Grand Bouffe. The big feast. With myself, Cole Smithy, and my co-host, Mike Lacey. As we have done each and every week for 90 episodes, <laughs> we like are that. here to copiously consume international politics and culture through the prism of a single film and a different craft beer each week. Hello, Mike. Hey, Cole. So this wasn't a Friday the 13th movie. I was shocked. Oh, really? Is that what you thought? <laughs> I, saw you I saw Jason. I, I, I saw that at one point it was available on Filmstruck, so that seemed odd to me. that it I was know. We had there. a really weird disconnect because I, w- I, w- I watched it six days ago on Filmstruck, and then we tried to dial it up, and you tried to dial it up a couple days ago. Not there anymore. I wonder if it's, uh, well, it's on Amazon now. I wonder if it wasn't on Amazon uh earlier in the week and now it is i don't know how those licensing things works they, work, they but hop it, around. It, it was very inconvenient usually it's for not us. on a tuesday at the end of march though so it's, you would it's, think it's odd but we both saw it and we seem to be in a select group of people in history that have seen it well it's a very special film it was made by filmmaker shirley clark who won an academy award for a short film that she made, I believe it's called Skyscraper. About it's about 20 minutes long, and it is uh, about the construction of six, 66 Fifth Avenue. Uh, which six sixty six. Yeah, I think that's the. I think I mean I'll double check that. Is that the building that Jared Kushner bought? Six sixty six Fifth Avenue. It may be. Yeah, I think so. It could well be. That's interesting. And in and that movie also includes shots of the Roxy Theater, which was demolished the year the skyscraper was released. And if you go on Google and look up the Roxy Theater in Manhattan, it was a beautiful, beautiful theater. There's there's some sort of Roxy Theater thing in um like a Soho ish though. Is there a Roxy down there? There's one in San Francisco, Roxy Theater, where I, I saw a bunch of art house films when I was living there. Is that just is, is that just like a sort of like a Lowe's thing? Was it just a brand? Was it just... I don't know. It's a good question. I like. I mean, obviously, R O X Y. I, I, I have a That's great. I, I have a friend whose whose daughter, little baby daughter's name is Roxy. I guess she's not a baby anymore. I, like I dated, four. I dated a Roxy. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's a fun day. Roxy. I never dated a Roxy. Roxy music. Roxy Music, one of my faves. Yeah. In Every Dream House, a heartache. So I picked a beer this week. This is actually one of my for real favorite beers. This is a Left Hand Brewing Company's milk, Yay, left hand. milk Stout Nitro. Um, I don't like Guinness. Mm, really? I, every time I drink a Guinness, though, I like what it's getting at, and I think this it comes closer. Hmm. A very like a high alcohol content thick dairy fueled sort of a hard milkshake in a bottle it looks like a milkshake in a glass when you pour it it's got this frothy foam on the top it looks kind of it's very chocolatey. pretty it's very pretty chocolatey and i thought that i l- dated a justine by the way did you ever date a justine never dated a justine there you go never dated a justine touche um I thought Left Hand Brewing Company. Just, just left trying to hand, throw you off track. The Left Hand Path is something that Jason walks. You know, sort of the, oh my the goodness. other side. That's of the, perfect. The That's other perfect. side, you know. No, and, I like it. And I think it's, you know. Not and, and he's also, he's he's stout. He is stout of character. He's stout of character. He's yeah. somebody who's he's, very he's, stout of character. He's not, he's, he's, he, well, he's not he's a, not he's a pushover. Big guy. He's not a big guy, but he's, you know, he's, I think he's, he, he's he learned hardy. a lot from Tough Brother, you know. Well, I, I should, I'd like to just, we're going to, have fun pulling out little factoids about this movie. Uh, one of which was you seem to know the backstory. I just want to say I just finished watching this film here at your apartment, and I hadn't watched the last fifteen minutes, which I was considering bullshitting and being like, "Yeah, I saw the whole thing." Uh, it's all just an interview. It's all just a single camera on one person talking. What what could be different in the last fifteen minutes? Holy shit! Things take a left turn in this straight on interview with one person all right let's before we dive in let's toast with the left hand brewing company's uh milk stout nitro there we go there we go yeah let's talk about this mm. oh yeah it really does taste like a milkshake yep i i, I also stuck it in the freezer for about 45 minutes so I, i'd recommend it, it. I think so it's got a little bit of ice creaminess on that head I go a little extra cold on this one. I think, mm-hmm. I think it turns for the best. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
It is so good. Yeah. It's luscious. It's really luscious. You hold that thing up to the light, it's opaque. You can't you, see you anything can't, through you it. You can't see any light through it. No, it's a black beer. Yeah. Really it's, black. It's, 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 it's yummy. Like it's, the inky sea. It's, 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 it's filling, and you know what it doesn't? It's more vanilla than chocolate. Mm. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. I think a lot, some beers there are there are chocolate really beers clean. that make it feel a bit candyish and gimmicky. This feels like a well executed. Yeah, whoever whoever is brewing for Left Hand, they've really got their finger on the pulse because this little baby, this little baby is a meal in itself. I mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. it's really yummy. Now, I'm wondering what the big. alcohol content is. It could it could be not actually that high, and it could be up to. It's six percent. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's you know, pretty, yeah, you're, you're, you're doing more than a, you're doing more than a, than a bud. Yeah. But it's it's not IPA level at all. Oh yeah, I mean, this is delicious. This is really be great with any kind of meal. I would love to eat that you with know, the it, with it, the big old. It's funny we're talking about the temperature. It says pour at forty to forty five Fahrenheit. Drink at fifty to fifty five. Mm. That's an interesting mm. distinction. I think they're they're. You don't you don't see temperatures much on a beer. I think that no, it's that's definitely been discovered that. Okay, and also, you ready for ingredients? Tell me. Okay, so uh, I, I know you don't got all day, but this might. Oh, take we have plenty of time. It's a podcast, man. Rocky Mountain water, malted barley, lactose, flaked oats, mm. hops, and yeast. Period. Mm. Isn't that cool? That's, that's good. That's it. That's, that's, I, I know basically what all of those are. Lactose is. It's, it's the left sort of hand dirt. brewing, man. Yeah. They're one of. They're they're a fave around the Blind Tiger, I do believe. And the Milk Stout Nitro. Get yourself a few bottles of this baby. Chill them up real good and watch some P- Shirley Clark's Portrait of Jason. All right, so here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna play, t- play a drinking game along with Jason. Let it's me, pretty intuitive. Let what me that game let, is. let me tell you just a few things that I know about this movie. Okay, great. One thing that I know is that it was that Shirley Clark, who had won uh, an Oscar for this short film uh, that she made <clears throat> in, uh, was looks like it, she received an Oscar nomination for Skyscraper. I thought she won. I think she won. But anyway, the point is, she made this movie in 1967. She came from money. She was living in the penthouse apartment of the Chelsea Hotel with her black boyfriend, uh, actor Carl Lee. Oh, wow. And who is. <clears throat> so let me. Yeah. So, so okay. and they okay. and so they and so they made this film. They shot it over a 12 hour period between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. in the winter of 67. So it's a 12-hour shoot, and go. That's what happened. Wow. That's what happened. And so Fucking just for, for for a little more backstory about the cinema verite aspects of this movie, which beguile everyone who sees it, and why wouldn't they? Because this guy, Jason Holliday, uh, what's his real name? Payne? Aaron, Adam, Aaron, Aaron. Aaron Payne is his real name, but yeah. he changed it. And he is quite the performer, uh, as as we he's, find, he's a true he's a true queen. He's he's the he what he, he's exuding is very mainstream now. It's he's very the, RuPaul. He's it's, the black Mark Twain of his day. Yeah, I would say yeah, that's it. it's it, he is so erudite. He's so articulate, and he's so haughty and just hilarious he's got so many funny mannerisms and the way and and obviously he he's the real he is the real mccoy he is somebody who hung out with miles davis yeah. and andy warhol andy warhol wanted to make a movie with him and he tells a couple of miles davis stories which for my money are just worth the price of admission alone they're hilarious in in the story but to just to, to get to the setup of the movie of which we're going to talk about there's a movie about the making of this movie yeah, by, an, by, right by, a, by a black new york filmmaker yes we're gonna, we're gonna talk, and that was i think from 2012 we're gonna talk about that in a minute too but okay so carl lee was one of these uh black actors in the 60s and 70s who uh well, he was in a, he was the, a supporting character in a lot of movies like superfly and the connection and the landlord and he was shirley clark's boyfriend okay but he was also a junkie and he was friends with 
Jason Holiday. With Jason Holiday. Jason Holiday had his parents ran a restaurant somewhere in New Jersey, I think. Okay. And he had studied acting uh, in Los Angeles. So are you talking about Carl or Jason right now? Sorry, now I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking about Jason. Now. Okay, I'm talking about Jason. Um, just one second, I want to pull up my own review. By the way, if you want to read uh, my my review of uh, Portrait of Jason, just go to colesmithy.com. Where, by the way, you can contribute to. My Patreon account, which is woefully n- unattended at this moment, so any oh yeah any any contributions that you make will be greatly appreciated. Aaron Payne studied acting at the Actors Workshop in Hollywood under Charles Lawton. Oh wow, which is pretty cool. Before studying uh, uh, at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York, and so you really get that he is a performer who's trying to get his. His act together, but what happens in the in the in the, the setup for the story that we're that we're watching is he had had some sort of tryst or affair with Carl Lee, okay, who was obviously Shirley Clark's girlfriend, uh huh, or boyfriend. Shirley she's boyfriend. she's the girlfriend. Yeah, she's yeah, she's white. He's black, uh, and so there was some jealousy. Needless to say, a tryst while they were dating or previous. Seems like while they were dating. I don't know, you know, t- what really went on, but but it, it seemed that she, as a filmmaker, decided to bring the burning embers into her apartment and film them for twelve. So hours. is this her apartment? Yeah, this is her penthouse. This is her penthouse apartment at the Chelsea Hotel. Wow, where it's all being filmed so, over, so over a twelve-hour period from nine p.m. to nine a.m. the next morning. So let me try to let me try to paraphrase. Yeah, Shirley Clark is this well-heeled Academy Award-winning filmmaker who's dating someone. Um, uh, very, a, a very, a very respected New York character actor. Yeah, he's, yeah, she's da- she's dating she's dating a man who Carl Lee, Carl Lee, who may have cheated on her, had some sort of relationship right. with uh, another man. Who is a aspiring nightclub performer? Yeah, who he and, who, who, and who they they met through acting circles. Met through acting circles, and he's a self declared hustler. You know, he's he's definitely. Like, I love that opening line. Yeah, I'm a stone hustler. A That's stone what he hustler. says. Yeah, and so the way that she deals with this is to not, you know, maybe now you'd like we have an open relationship, um, or you know, th- throw your your boyfriend out because even if he's bi doesn't mean he can cheat on you she invites this man that her boyfriend has cheated on her with to make a movie to, to make ma- a movie to about make a movie okay and so let's leave out the first the last 15 minutes and just talk about yeah yeah talk about what it what yeah. it is it is a straight on interview yeah but it's a performative interview yep. and and, uh, and Jason and, reminds and you, me and of it, a, it's, and it's, it's very hard. It's Spalding Gray type, yeah, like exactly. Extemporaneous that's right. That's right. And, but it, and it, right, it, that's exactly right. And it's and it's very difficult to tell where the performer and the performance and the truth lie, because as we all know, you know, you can tell. You can you or I could try and come up with the craziest fictional story off the cuff right now and it would probably be the truest thing that either one of us ever spoke in our lives right we, we'd be drawing from something right and that's and that's what i think you get through this movie but the way that it's so the way that the movie uh brings you in w- it, with the shot being really out of focus Cl- shirley clark is yeah, a, see it, the I, I have to say she's, she's a total genius for, yeah. for and she studied with some we're gonna talk about i'll talk tell you some stuff about her history and she, who she studied with, filmmakers that she studied with. I know that uh, Jonah, Jonah Mika, Jonas Mikas was living in the uh, Chelsea Hotel at the time, and they used to see each other all the time. Uh, so she had some some really great mentors. Uh, but her her instincts for filmmaking are evident all in, everywhere in, in in this picture, especially though I think are the uh, is the way that she, she she draws from these out of focus. Uh, segues right. because she stays out of focus way too long, and, and when the movie starts, you look in this out of focus shot, and you're thinking, "God damn, is there something wrong with like you know, is this the, is it the you know my projector? Like, what's going on? Why right. why is it staying out of focus so much?" Well, Jason is is becoming more and more intoxicated. We're watching him drink on camera. He's drinking. He's smoking pot. And, and the, the 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 fading in and out seemed like 
when you've had a really long night of drinking and you're you're fading in and out. But it's yeah. interesting because you know the audio is being recorded separately as it would, and there's also a new wave postmodern element where you're hearing them talk about how many magazines mm-hmm. they have left, how mm-hmm. many feet of film. I love the keep, skull keep, keep on the on, sound, on the books in the background. He's yeah. in front of a, a, a fireplace. Yeah, it's and, and and there's some art books, like three very elegantly set art books, and there's a human skull right. sitting on top of them in the background. So, so again, leaving leaving out the last 15 minutes, yeah, it is an amazing piece of you want to say like anthropology, and it also feels from a 2018 perspective very problematic because you have a very interesting person discussing being black and being a houseboy, working as a houseboy. houseboy. You know, th- there's just this, and there's. Um, but also, Pat, the perspective feels like an, he's an exoticism. You're, you're wondering. It's, you're, well, you're both giving him a stage, and you're also gawking at him a little bit. Well, because and that, well, feel and, that the, and the stories that he tells, where he talks about passing uh, as uh, a higher class, where he wears he 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 calls the jacket that he wears a, a Marlon Brando jacket, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's got a white Oxford shirt that's unbuttoned on the call at the at the. Uh, collar and so he he looks like uh an older version of what james dean would have been if he had lived longer living in the west village uh-huh. you know he's got uh-huh. these coke bottle glasses which i just can't get over how styly they are oh those are a week from being in right now oh with the little diamonds on the front and on the sides yeah they're so charismatic they just draw you in even more than you already would be because this guy is such a raconteur. He's the ultimate raconteur, this guy. And it's it's an amazing artifact of... 1967, too. Before 19- bef- it was Well, it was Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. It was before the Summer of Love, which, of course, ended with Charles Manson and right. and Gimme Shelter with the, the Rolling Stones but a he's concert also, where, where, where I, a guy got killed. I'm going to guess he might be in his 40s. Right? Like, yeah, and, yeah. He's and so what, I'd say he's he's in his early like forty one, forty two, yeah, probably. And so his story is a history of of, it's an, of, of queer sexuality in America from the thirties to this. Like it's the, a it's the a 70s. whole it's a whole history of slavery and everything, man. It's fascinating and 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 also working as a hustler he tells some yeah. stories about you know his encounters with, with a cop and stuff yeah, and in he, new york and how he moved to from maine to la and he talks about this town that he moved in where he was you know he had planned for months he had tri- this trip for months to get there and then he got there and an hour after he got there he got shut down because they knew what he was up to yeah. trying to hustle and it was like his his dream was he's all over yeah and he's he's very explicit about exactly the sexuality he's talking about which is the thing that I've, I've, i'm always curious about um, but that's the I, great thing is he's he's explicit and he isn't it, well you know he tells well, he's, though it's, like, he it's has, like i know what i know i like i'm curious about okay everyone people have always been promiscuous but like what did that really mean did that mean they like made out or like did they like give blow jobs okay they, no, yeah. you know you, no like, i love i love the thing where, where, he, where he talks about how you know the the, the trick is you want to do as little as possible and get paid as much as possible right yeah. And I think you know that just says it all for any the, yeah. for any kind of sex worker. You know, you want to you want to get in, do as little as you possibly can, and get the most but he's dough a, and get but, out. But he, he's also very explicit about like, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm experimental. I've done I've done everything, and, and he gives you a list, and it's wild to hear from 68 someone saying 67 it, 67 just just the, the the different specific sex rocks they did, the way that they talked about it, and it feels very well, modern also, like well, this this is approaching his, something like you could you could put this on te- like on television now almost this must have been shocking right at what gets time. me is the regret i really like the way he phrases the regret about how he's pretty much just been having sex all day every day for years and now he's got to get his shit together because he's been borrowing money from people to put together this cabaret act that's his dream right and now he's working with a with a pianist and he's and he's trying to put together that he's trying to it, it, he's trying to go straight in the internet <laughs> if that's a I don't right. know, that, this is the wrong terminology in this context he but has a, he has a nightclub act though that is, is the culmination of his ambitions and when he bursts in the song you know he's the real deal 
Yeah. Uh, he sings this this Broadway uh, song a cappella, and it is just it's great. And, it's really entertaining. And his shtick is a very proto version of what queer drag performers do to this day. Are yeah. these homage to these old Hollywood um, um, kind of stereotypes. Icons. Of, the, the icons, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, wh- who is the, the actress that he uh, holds up? It's not Joan Crawford. I know. Right? I, can't rem- I can't remember. I wish I'd written it down. Uh, he... What, you know, it's just an interesting thing to me is that... It's who, not Tallulah Bankhead, but it's somebody no, like that. It's somebody who's who really did, body. Who did gay men look up to in films because they didn't see themselves? Yeah. They looked up to a certain type of actress that had this persona. And, like, uh, I won't say exactly what he says, but, you know, she was the closest to, uh, and like, an, an F word that, that we had in the movies. Yeah. And it's it's just interesting. And... His sexuality is very fluid, very complicated. He seems to be bi, well, but more so than that, honest. he seems to be like there's things that he says Seemingly. that's like your that make him appear to be trans, but that's like uh, and but he discusses in, he talks in, he, about he talks about about, um, about trans women. He's he like, t- it's like they're they're in his world. There are absolutely. Uh, women in prison who have male genitalia but identify as female and he talks about them and he seems to relate and have a distance it's just he is just giving a window to a very complicated new york city and i gotta say i i I will i've lived in new york long enough that when he's throwing out these street corners i'm like yeah i'm there it's so boring now that's fascinating that that was just well yeah you know there's that ramon song 53rd and third about where Dee Dee used to hustle, and that's well, it's four, and that's it was e- fourteen and third that uh, that he talks about running into some queens that are selling these like stolen clothes. And yeah, stuff. but he also talks about he talks about fifty third uh, or or the East fifties, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and, and like that was a, a place where where he uh, where he hustled a lot of stuff, a lot so of it's, action. So it's, it's it's all this. It's an amazing artifact, and I am tempted to say that this is a piece of history of queer New York City that needs to be preserved for all time and should be put like on the same shelf as Paris is burning there <laughs> is a whole other side to it which is even before again, right, well, the last me, 15 let, minutes let is me help, problematic. Let, let me help you out here yeah. because the, the Library of Congress selected the movie for preservation in the National Film Registry finding it culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. So those boxes have been ticked, yeah. And supposedly, we—I mean, we're going to have to talk about what happens in the end of the movie. Well, let's just talk about the context, the way that the way that, that Shirley Clark handles the uh, the shoot, because she is, hes there smoking cigarettes or joints. Constantly drinking a cocktail or near the end swigging from a bottle. Mm-hmm. It's a very plush little. He's on the couch, but he stands a lot. You know, he's he's yeah. giving his dissertation, as it were. He's and being cued to tell he's, stories. He's, tell the one about. He's got this he's and that. he's got a he's got some props. He's got the uh, the thing that he what's that called the the chemise or something that he throws around his neck, the scarf, the, yeah. fl- the, the furry scarf that he throws around. Right. Which you see, the poster. you see in the poster. It's, it's, it's beautiful. So yeah. So the movie's in, in black and white and, uh, Shirley Clark uses a lot of it, it, very close up shots and she'll just keep the close up just like you're watching the passion of Joan, Joan of Arc. So you have plenty of time to really study his face and his expressions and he's just such a charismatic person. Every little twitch of his eye, his little his smile, the the way that he stops and thinks about things and words things, he is just such a fascinating person. You just want to see him on a couch being interviewed, by doing Mike doing Douglas, this. But he's too he's he's too ahead of his time. He's too transparent. He's too he's, he's too transgressive and. There is an energy now which has been teleported to modern day, and you do see this 
this vibe, this energy, and this passion, and a, a lot of people brought it to now from John Waters and RuPaul, and it's, it's if you saw someone now behaving like this, it's like, oh, yeah, that's that thing. We know that, and, you know, like, wh what else can you do? But seeing it from 67 is just very vibrant and fascinating. It's, you know, it, it's interesting because it's one of those uh, – it's a it's a piece it's an it, it is a very identifiable piece of cinema from the time and you can see how this uh, her artistic Shirley Clark's artistic impulses led to things like the punk rock movement um, you know it's in that soil of Manhattan artistic achievement and desire it's very there's nothing explicit. The language is explicit. They, like what he's talking about, it, he's, oh, no punches. You know, like it's, it's, it's so transgressive, and it, and it is someone talking about uh, being a sex worker in, in graphic details. But, but with the performativeness of, it's not that graphic though. I mean, he's not, not, he's not really throwing down about. You know, he's not using dirty words. That's what mm, I want to say. No, but you, but you, there is a lack of ambiguity about the actions, though. You know. You hear about about Hollywood love affairs or things from that time, and the euphemisms blur what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. you know, the, there's no blurring of the actions. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it would it it wouldn't get an NC-17 rating now, and there's I think enough fuck words that it would. Take I don't. Yeah, out, I mean, but it, it's. That, wait, I mean, it, what gets me about his um, his speech is that he's so. He's so bourgeoisie. He really puts over it's this. Very, you, very you, you really get this this idea that you know. I was thinking about the Spike Lee movie. Um, was it called Passing Strange? Is that it? Oh yeah, I love Passing Strange. And that and 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 this is you know he's that kind of cat where you know this guy as what Stu. Yeah, he's Stu. Right, this guy could easily have have gone to the uh, upper class white boarding school. And he would have been the token black there, you know, but he would have been keeping up with the pretty white boys who, you know, of course, there's going to be a handful that are going to fall his way. And maybe he's rowing crew and doing like all the stuff and wearing the the Ralph Lauren polo shirts or the Lacoste polo shirts. Mm -hmm. yeah, he really pulls that off. Yeah. And at, at, the, at the same time, there's, you know, this feels trite to say, but it's like there's there's pride. Extent, there's an, an unabashedness of of who he is and his dream is to go on stage and to do it the right way to get the money you know maybe it's other people's money but you're going to go up there and you're going to do your bits and your characters and sing your songs and he has this ambition and maybe now we can talk about the the left turn where it's we, we, we've already set it up so it won't be such a shock as go for, for me it lay it, it yeah talk about it you start to hear questions coming from you know from the, off camera from off camera from the peanut gallery and you don't and you don't know who who these people you never know no uh, if you, uh, as there's as, no title card explaining what you're watching no if you if you're if you're just somebody who just walked in the movie you hear some voices you don't know if it's necessarily the filmmaker or who the, you don't know where these voices are coming from off camera and you never find out thus far it's been a movie whose conceit appears to be this is a hyper interesting person let's get him on camera and preserve them and you know and y you love performing i love filmmaking what a great opportunity to kind of an interrogation not it's not a the specifics are never stated well they're pull, they're pulling information out of him they're prompting him i would say it's more like the actor on stage who who just he doesn't really need help with his lines he just needs help getting into the next section the next segue of what he wants yeah, to talk th about yeah throughout it that's true the, the interaction is is like oh that was great good job Though there is this curtness and when we hear shirley clark talk it's <laughs> she's very She's not just professional. She sounds like she's doing a study for like the Kinsey Institute. She's, <laughs> she's very, she's very serious and, and uh, sort of like uh, sterile. But you you did hear a voice of Carl, who seems to be someone who, who knows him, who has a history, and is tell you know, the one about this, tell the one about that. You know, you know who 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 ripped off her shtick was Errol Morris. 
by the way. Mm. For sure. I can see that, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, so C- Carl's been prompting him, tell this story, tell that story, as if they're trying to, to get all the good material out there. Um, and there is a sense of exploitation that really quickly came across, the, the, mm-hmm. the menace that, the, the, that they are trying to get Jason to perform. And then at the end of the 15 minute, like about 15 minutes to the end, it starts this Carl who's been talking and he sounds like maybe he's been drinking too. He's like, you're fucking full of shit, Jason. <laughs> you mother- why'd you tell those lies you about me? Why'd, why'd you write, why'd, why'd you, you write, write, write this shit letter about me? Why uh-huh. you, you're so fucking full of like, you, you, yeah, you it doesn't go on to, to yeah, just enough. But, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't go on too long, but it, but it, this refrain comes back this like, and, and Jason, who's plastered, and you, you suddenly drop back and say, like, oh, my God, they, they invited this man to this fancy apartment, ma- made him tell his stories, g- perform his act. That's the whole thing. It's like, this is his act that he's doing for them, and they're going to profit off of him doing his well, act Well, theoretically, for them. theoretically. Well, yeah, I'm sure they didn't make a dime out of this. But they, they capture it all, and it's, it's, um, it's an ambush. It seems like, yeah. It seems like it's an ambush. And yeah. And Jason is plastered. You you get a sense that this is not the first time someone has called him out for deceiving them romantically or sexually. That this is not the first time that someone's taken him to task for <laughs> betraying them. He seems he seems like an old hat at a man saying, "How could you do this to me?" He's like, "Baby doll, like, like." Well, he's you know got homie. You know homie's got skills. There's no question he about is. it. He's got he's got an answer for every situation. You know, he's one of those guys who you know they say you know like Bruce Lee famously was you know talked about how you know be 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 water take any shame. Well, and but, but more more pointedly, you you know if you can avoid the fu- the fight in any way, avoid the fight. Mm. You never fight until you're absolutely positive. Like if 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 if, if like shitting your pants means that the cops <laughs> can not touch you, right. he's going to leave you alone. Go ahead and shit your pants. You know, and this is that guy. He knows every trick in the book. He's not going to he's not going to half step on anything. As soon as as soon as he sees this shot, he's taking it. He's not he's not do take, we, he's not waiting. Do we maybe think that he's possibly a little Antisocial personality, sort of a little little love and sex addict. He's, he's definitely he's, got some addictions going. Uh, Jason talks about how you know love. Yeah, I fall in love. I fall in love quickly and easily, and I fall out of love just easy. But well, I love what, I love how he talks about how he can make anyone feel like they are the most important person on the planet. He talks it's, about how he does it. He's really, you, you know, he tell he tells stories out of school. That's kind of what the whole thing is, really, is, is you know, this guy telling tells out of school. Well, it's, 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 it's a whole type of, it's why I love listening to, like, Gilbert Gottfried's podcast, because it's people telling these sexually explicit stories about long dead celebrities, and even if they're not real, you know they're not real, and it doesn't matter if they're real. There's something so entertaining about someone, so I, I was with, I was with this ungodly famous person and this other ungodly famous person and so, so forth showed up and they're, they're, I love this story. I love the story he tells about their Phil- pants were down. Philly, and- Philly Joe Jones coming into a club where Miles Davis was. Philly Joe Jones, if you don't know, great jazz drummer, one of the greatest jazz drummers of all time, coming in with and and did I mention that his name is Philly Joe Jones and yes, he's African American and he's coming into the club with. Uh, a blonde white mm-hmm. woman on his arm, and he walks past Miles without deigning to give him any. It's it's the any, Mi- any, Miles Davis. Any, you, yeah, you, 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 you any greeting him. at all? Yeah, and yeah. this is mid sixties when Miles Davis yeah. was, you know, I'm, I think pr- kind of blue. He's like the, it, the, it, the Pope it, of it, jazz, right? Well, it's still the highest selling jazz record of all time, which it was then too, uh, which is a big deal. But anyway, he <laughs> so he walks past Miles with the with the blonde on his arm. And Miles, I guess, uh, Holiday just says something to Miles about it. And, and Miles is like, yeah, I just wish he had. Why did he have to hold his lips like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know exactly what he, you know, he's pursing his lips like, I am 
so much better than every money here. Right. You could just picture, and 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 of course, holidays. You know, he he sh- he's doing it with his lips. It's just priceless, it, man. That kind of stuff. That is just out, priceless. It doesn't fucking matter one bit if it's not true, because it's. Well, but see, that's, it's, it's but, that's so a, but that's true. the thing is what we find out about if you, you, you find out more stuff about this guy is that he did rub shoulders well, with with Miles Davis and Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol, but, Andy Warhol wanted to, wanted to put him in a well, movie. Of course, of course. I'm yeah, telling you, the, but you I'm know. saying even if, I'm I'm not I'm not saying like maybe he didn't know he didn't know Miles Davis, but it's like it's it's a style of these 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 jokes, these anecdotes about famous people that even if Miles Davis didn't do that. That makes sense for Miles Davis to have done that, and that's why it's it's a great story and it's entertaining. If you're like, I was with Miles Davis, and uh, turns out that um, you know, it's, uh, I have a funny story, and it has to do with uh, he had a bonsai tree, and he made this joke about the bonsai. It'd be like, well, well I don't, like, what the fuck does that have to do with my concept of Miles Davis? You know, that story is like, it's like, well, I don't know Miles Davis, but like that, that's fucking funny for him to say. Really like, funny. That's really great. Well, so if Mike, if Mike had been staying on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 watch. we would be we would watch Sh- Jason and Shirley. Yeah, so. which which is a, a 2015 film, which is oh, it's actually, which is only 79 minutes. It actually minutes turns long. out it was 66. It looks like that this happened. This is even earlier. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, oh it names Just, the date. It was December 3rd of 1966 when she when award, when Oscar winning filmmaker Shirley Clark invited. Jason Holiday, a black gay hustler, drug addict, and transient to her Chelsea Hotel penthouse. Yeah, it's you just put it like that, and it's what a loaded, complicated situation this is. So the so I, I I'm I'm really anxious to watch Jason and Shirley Stephen Winter's movie, who uh, I believe is a black filmmaker who still lives in New York City. And so the thing about this movie is it's a recreation of the shoot. And the actor, as far as I oh, it's 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 a narrative. It's not it's not a talk about it. It's a movie. No, it's a movie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a it, yeah. It's, it's I don't know what you call that, but um, if if you should contact him, and if you get him, I would drop anything and and be on an episode about about this film. So Mike Bailey Gates, I believe. I think is that who plays. I don't know how they do it, but what from from what I understand, um. The guy who plays Holiday is just amazing, and so I'm very curious about this movie from Jason and Shirley from 2015. But you know, obviously, we're rebounding from the disaster that was our Black Panther podcast. Oh, I like I like the Black Panther. You like? Oh, I know you. You thought that was a good movie. Yeah, I thought. I mean, it was, it was how do you think? It, how do you think? As, it, as, as you, a superhero movie, I thought it was pretty good. Do, yeah, but as a movie, how do you think it, it rates with? As a movie, court, as a movie outside of its context, outside of just the, as a movie, just yeah, as a movie? like like uh, the movie, com- like this movie compared to J- Portrait of Jason. Well, it's very different things, uh, you know, in terms of uh, one's good and one's bad. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's how I feel about. No, it. I, don't, I, don't, I, I put things in the context that they are aiming for, and in the type of film that I it's put things in context of my experience while I'm watching them. Okay, so it's. I I I quite I think I I enjoyed them in equal ways in different ways you know I'm sorry to hear I that. have to say <laughs> I ice cream is the worst lobster I've ever had I'll say that uh huh I th- I, I think you know what I, mean? I, I think it's a fat now lobster ice cream you know what if that's true <laughs> that really complicates <laughs> my drunken off the cuff um little little bit there well I, I'm I'm very I'm very sad. Mike and I only have three, I think, more episodes right. to record, and sadly, it seems like Jason and Shirley will not be among them. But we do know that we're going to do Manderley, yes, as one of them, which I rewatched recently. And I will need to see the first one. This um, Von Trier is going to climb the ranks of uh, the number of films that we've done in of our one hundred. I think he. Well, no. Yeah, we've done two. Really? So yeah, we we've done Antichrist. Okay. We've done Breaking the Waves. Oh. And Mandalay would be three, right? Yeah. Yeah. That that's I, I'm not sure if we've done. He's the only one to have a trifecta. That then on may the be right. Booth. I mean, there's there's a we've done a f- um a future foe at least two I believe we've done. We did two. We did we did uh, Night for Day and we did the Last yeah. Metro. Night for Day or Day for Night. Day for Night. Day for I night? guess. Day for Last Night. Last Metro. Yeah. Um, a, f- a few others have gotten um, the Adam Curtis. 
Uh huh. Adam Curtis. It's too bad we're not doing Adam Curtis. That, that's, well, you can always come back on anytime you want to do Adam Curtis. That'd be great. Just give me a buzz. Well, especially if we can get Adam Curtis on there. Well, yeah, but that's you, you know. But now you have like, all this extra time, so you know, I'll, you, you I'll, gotta I'll hit him up. Give, yeah. him, give him a call. Hey, um, any last words on uh, Portrait Jason? I, I, what I'll say on it is, it's an amazing artifact. It is a honestly, as its title implies, a portrait of yep. a person that's fascinating. Yeah, it is also a portrait of its times. It's yep. the more I hear about the story, the the more problematic. The more it is in a context where, yeah, in 1966 there was not a uh, equanimity of class and race at all in this country. Not that there is now, but <laughs> that context makes a lot of sense. Is that if you had an Academy Award winning filmmaker making a movie about you, and you were uh, a hustler and a, and a transient uh, and a gay black man in New York City, there was likely to be some complexity, especially if you fucked her. Okay, so I wanted. I, so yeah, so it, it's for me. It's a very liberating movie. It fe- everything about this movie feels very liberating, and especially to the point after having come after uh, after having done our, our only superhero movie, I, I think I will never have another superhero movie on LeGrand Booth. I'm, I was so disappointed with the last one. But what I did experience through this movie was the idea of Shirley Clark as a filmmaker. Her revenge for her lover's adultery was to make a movie. And I think that's a great lesson in itself. I think she is the villain of that she, movie. Just she is the villain. Yeah. She is the villain. She's totally the villain. No question about it. But she also, when she edited the movie, she came to, to really love um, Jason. Oh, is that the... Yeah. That's the through line. That's what that's what ended up happening. I, I wonder if she went into so, it hearing like, oh, like, and I think you have to understand he's such an interesting, complicated person. If you met no, him, I mean, she's I like, do- oh, fuck, I'm gonna I'm gonna expose him for everything he is, and then you get on camera. Well, it's I like, don't know if she. I don't know if the, I don't. I don't think that she was ever of that mind that you know I'm going to expose him. I think that she did it uh, with a pure artistic heart, and I think that's what comes through in the movie, and so. It, well, I, and, and and I think and I, some and, and, uh, unethical like I don't think you should you should uh, go okay, into I don't, an interview. I, okay, but I don't want to I don't want to judge the, the what happened with all that because here's here's a few things that yeah. I th- that I really think about that. This is like the real stuff that most people would not uh, get around to in this movie. Is that um, it, the whole thing could have easily just been a setup. You know, where they had talked through the whole thing, like we're gonna do this, it's gonna you know, we're gonna shoot for as long as we can and we're gonna we're gonna throw stones at you, we're gonna try and get you to emotional places and you know, we might be nasty, we might use real things out of your real life. All right, I'm gonna tell you a legendary story that okay. I have. Uh, this one, is, I'm glad we got to this moment because I'd forgotten about it. But I wanted to. I want you. I want you to come in on the next show, and I want you to tell a legend, legendary story out of your past. Yeah. Okay. Because I have a legendary story out of my past that I realized that I I I, <laughs> I had never told Catherine. I told her like the first time. Like, I love like, these. like 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 a week ago. Yeah. You, and and it was like we we, we came back from the, from the bar and she wanted to smoke a cigarette in the corner and, uh, and I was like yeah so let me tell you this this thing that happened. <laughs> In my artistic growth. So I was living in my, I'd gotten an acting scholarship to the Western stage at Hardinell College in Salinas. And I was living out of my Chevy van. I had this cool Chevy van that I had outfitted uh, with um, reflective stuff on the windows. It had a little sky roof that I could open up for air and stuff. And I was in this acting corps of 20 people. There were 10 men and 10 women in the core one acting program at Hartnell. And it was an acting scholarship. So you got about $620 for the whole year for two semesters. None of that money showed up, by the way, until after I returned to San Francisco. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I, w- I was, I, was li- I mean, I, w- I would get up in the morning, I would go swim in the pool and take a shower and then go to my first class, which would be dance, modern dance. And then it was just all acting classes and stuff. I ended up playing timpani in a 38-piece symphony. Um, I had the hots for this uh, ballerina, so I ended up doing ballet for the whole time. And this <laughs> was all stuff, by the way, that was that was completely 
looked down upon by the people who ran the acting department. Can I just say, if, if you had Coke bottle glasses and a cigarette right now, this would be such a better story. I played I, 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 I played drums for the pep band, so I was there at all of the uh, all the, the football games and stuff, yeah. playing drums. I was, you know, because, hey, when you live in your van, guess what? All you do is school. I had a 4.0 GPA, Dean's List, both semesters. Thank you very much. And um, so <laughs> then we had this acting exercise to complete. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is where it gets a little dicey. And I, I had a box of, of, of love letters. I won't say who from uh, because she's a public figure. But, <laughs> okay. but I <laughs> had a good old box of... This is uh, one of those, of, I feel bad for you, audience, because after the mics are off, I will be right. <laughs> interrogating you. And they were really well written and beautiful script. I mean, you know, she wrote in all caps, so it was all very legible. But needless to say, those days were over, but I still had this shoebox of love letters. Right. And FYI, guys, don't have a shoebox of love letters from your old girlfriend ever. Because guess what's going to happen? Your new girlfriend's going to go back and f- going to somehow find them, and she's going to hold your feet to the fire like your feet have never held been held to the fire. That did not happen to me because I was too smart for that. I hid right. them very well. Because th- guess what? You're not going to go back and read them every night. And if you no. are, like, yeah, you're get, a douche. Get, go to therapy. You're a d- exactly. So, so all I, I knew that all I needed to do to ace this acting exercise which is essentially where you 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 come on stage and you complete a a a task that is emotionally that you're emotionally connected to so it would have been very easy for me to take this box of letters on stage and start opening them and maybe glance through them and just start ripping them all up which i could have easily done this was Mm. my idea of what i would do for the the exercise i was gonna yeah i was gonna rip up this this box of love 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 love, real love letters on stage which i should have done be a great, it'd be a great piece. Would have worked, and you know everyone would have forgotten it, and I would have gotten an A and all that stuff. But no, I decided to go above and beyond <laughs> because I, I, I really, you know, acting was my thing at that time. I was really into Sam Shepard plays mm-hmm, and all this mm-hmm. stuff, and so I wanted to really show that that I had range and that I was fearless, that I could just do any fucking thing. And also, everybody in the core that I was with all these 19 other actors, for the most part, they all, they were these people that were really insecure and they were always seeking uh, approval. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that in acting actors, actors, they all, uh, how they, how they all just want to, you know, they want you to pat them on the head. That personality type that's specific to, and they all talk really fast. Every, every time you like everything, because they're so embarrassed about who they are as people. They talk really fast so that you maybe just won't even notice. You're talking about people whose uh, chosen profession is to pretend to be other people are yeah. insecure. Uh-huh. All right, just 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 making sure I follow. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, I, so, I, so I concocted this whole ridiculous story where I was a devout Catholic, and I was I was inspired okay. I, I was inspired by by Jim Carroll. I, I I I'll I'll tell everything. I will tell all. Um, and uh, and I was in a situation where my uh, girlfriend had died in a horrible car accident, and I had just received news of it. This was the um, the bit. This is the setup, the setup for my bit. And so, you know, I'm <laughs> 26, whatever, 25. But at the uh, you know at the old age of 25, you know, as Norm Macdonald says, you know about like you know why why do people, you know, how come people don't don't understand like why people commit suicide? Like, do you not know? Like the trajectory of life. Do you not know how shitty the world is? <laughs> so I was at that point, you know, it's pretty. Oh, and my best friend, I forgot. I left this out. My best friend was also in the car. So I lost my best friend and my girlfriend right. in, the, in this car accident. Again, in this setup. In this the bit. setup. So, okay. so I come on stage and I've got it, you know, set up like it's in my apartment and there's like the, the fold out three way mirror, you know, it's three pieces of mirror that fold out, and I've got some body paints and uh, and a tape recorder, and I had it set up. I was gonna play this this cassette that I had, the music, the source music, but somehow I, I had put the wrong tape in. So I come out and I hit the button. I'm wearing like a a crucifix around my neck. I got a basketball. Like I've just been shooting hoops. Like the last thing you want to do. Hey, like the last thing I want to do. You know, my like as the last fun thing that I'm going to do in life is I'm going to shoot some some basketball. You know, so I come in. I hit the I hit the play button, and it's Harry Belafonte. 
singing this song called Little Boxes made a ticky tacky. So I'm shocked. Little I'm all boxes, made a ticky tacky. Whatever. It's yeah. a very Caribbean thing. And, uh, and so I'm already out of my skin because the music that's playing isn't what I'm expecting. Your 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 sketch is going wrong. So I've yeah. So I've I've put I've really put myself out there. Like now I am I am on a different planet entirely. So I take off all my clothes. I, is that part of the plan? Yeah. Okay. And I smear this body paint all over me because you know you have to leave a good artifact behind. You know you want something. You know you don't want to like, just like blow your brains out and have like a big mess. You want to have something people go. Oh, oh. It's going for something there. And uh, <laughs> and, and so I, 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 I fake, fake hung myself nude, although covered, albeit covered in body paint and seen. And so <laughs> wow. So there are 19. Wait, there, hold on real quick. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Is that, w- what kind of reaction? I did wish it. Get? I wish it had been that good. No, <laughs> every <laughs> everyone was stupefied. The 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 teacher Tom, I can't remember his last name. He sent all of the, he sent the whole class out of the out of the auditorium. This is on a real stage, by the way. Um, sent everybody out of the auditorium and like called me down to the front of the stage. You like, sir are the greatest actor <laughs> of your generation. <laughs> Oh, if only, if only. I f- see. I feel like Jason now. Yeah. And uh, Brando, <laughs> Cagney. And he's see, he says so. Smithy. He, oh yeah, yeah. What, so what, what's going on? Are, 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 are you are you okay? And I said yes. I was I was acting, and of course I I I don't know how I got a four point oh GPA because I totally f- I, I got an F on that one. I mean I blew. If you can blow an acting exercise, and and I know that I'm not the only one. Like Andre Gregory has great stories. There's an Andre Gregory documentary, my uh, before and after dinner or something with Andre. I can't remember. It's a great documentary, and he tells some stories like this too. Where when he was in acting school, he would just do the the the, the worst. He would go in the worst direction. He would do the completely wrong thing. Well, I had that experience. I did the completely wrong thing. Not unlike Lady Bird, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although no yeah. one got no one got to see my wee wee this time, um, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, so for the ne- for uh, this so for the next week, we all felt like we did <laughs> exactly. So for the next week, you know, everyone's avoiding me. All my classmates are <laughs> avoiding me as if I've you know I, I've crossed some some line that you know they think that I'm really suicidal or something. But anyway, that's my that's that's my legendary Cole Smithy story that you that you will never hear anywhere else unless some of the people like somebody like Rick Still, who was one of my buddies then, um, decides to confirm that yes, indeed, this is what happened. Yeah, these uh, I love these these stories. These um, you know, they're very what the kind of stories that Jason's telling are these these r- revealing they're 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 embarrassing to oneself you know but you also have like a pride in who you are and what you did and one thing he talks about being beat up by his dad oh these these domestic fights that his mom got involved in yeah that's rough and he finds the humor in it yeah you know, it's. I brought up Spalding Gray at the beginning, and it, yeah. th- there is a, a striking through line in that. Yeah. In the, th- making, if not humor, entertainment out of the m- most horrible things in your life, and that's that's artistry. And I'm I'm sure you can still be guilty of many sins, like <laughs> <laughs> sleeping with some Academy Award winning short film directors. Supposedly Her- heroin, straight ad- heroin addicted, addicted boyfriend. Yeah, it sounds like he had a lot going on. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think he was read, led away from the straight and narrow necessarily entirely by Jason. Um, but there, it's it's one of the greatest gifts ever is to to find like levity and entertainment in in things that are. Well, you know, you know the thing is, it's like. I can relate. It's really like you can relate to these things. You know, it's like, well, no, part of entertaining and beautiful stories is like, that's crazier than any shit I would do. Cole, I wouldn't, like, uh, to your story, I wouldn't fucking do that. <laughs> but 
putting yourself out there that much mm-hmm. and you know like metaphorically if not literally like showing your dick to your whole class yeah. and and the reaction being everyone please leave the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah we all we all know that kind of feeling if if only in our like nightmares <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't know what to say about it i was just um it, it was a high point for me just because i felt like i i did have that that real freedom of expression that and the, i think the truth it's a, it's a truism about about freedom of expression is it, it it shocks it's always shocking anytime somebody really lays the truth on you that shit will shock your mind yeah. and that's that's what happens in this movie portrait of jason yeah. how much of it is is real or fiction doesn't matter because it's all true yeah I, jason is crying at the, at, the, at, the, at the end in carl he's like oh stop crying you bitch and then he just stops he's crying like, he's like yeah you got me <laughs> And this is you're like what am I what I do this is the nature this is the nature of actors you know they're they're acting and what like how far how how far do you have to whittle down before they're not acting? Who knows? Well, this this is a, this is a fascinating one. I think I think go out and see it. And this is my first sight unseen recommendation of another me- movie. Go out and watch Shirley and Jason because I I want to know the backstory. Uh, Jason and Shirley. Jason is called, and Shirley. Is what other, is, what is, went is, down? That's the Stephen. That's the Stephen Winter film. All right. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna say it once and for all, though. This movie, Portrait of Jason, puts any superhero ever made why to shame. We, and I. Do, and it doesn't. And it doesn't. Course, it, we, it, well, yeah, but it's it's a thing because you know this is you know real people expressing real ideas, and in this case, their in their impetus and their inspiration, however complicated and messy and jealous it is it delivers something that you keep, could never experience if it hadn't been this way all right thanks for listening remember to turn your cell phones off just turn them off and leave them off and you'll feel like a better person i promise i promise